There are many similarities when using React events, such as OnClick and OnMouseOver. In this video, we will show you how to use OnClick, OnMouseOver and Async events in React. We will use a React TypeScript Notes app, and come the end of this video, you'll be able to create a note, delete a note, and set up an async event. Now this demo is very similar to the one that we did in Blazor WebAssembly, and if you wish to check that out, you can go to youtube.com forward slash round the code. And for more web development tutorials, visit roundthecode.com and follow us on Twitter. It's at round the code. So we're going to start by adding a button on click event. Now in front of me, I've got Visual Studio Code open and I've got my React TypeScript app already created and built. So what we've got so far is we've got our app file here and this is the HTML here. We've got a couple of div classes and this represents a note listing component. Now this note listing component will allow you to enter your new note and press submit. It will also list all the notes that you've saved so far. So we've got a listing of notes down here and that represents a note view component instance. If we go into that, you can see there that just populates the note and the time and date that it was created. So we've got the application running here. So you can see we've got an area where we can actually create a note and we've got our saved notes here on the right hand side. Now, if we go and try and submit one, it's not actually doing anything because that's the whole point of this is to actually implement the on-click event for the button. So let's go ahead and start to do that. So we're going to go into note listing component first. The first thing we need to do is we need to go up here and we need to use React state hook. And we're going to create two variables. We're going to create the new note and set new note. We're going to set the use state as an empty string. Now, if you haven't used the React use state hook before, what it does is it sets up two variables here. This is where it actually stores the value, and the set new note is a function where we can update the value, and it will update the function component as well. Now that we've done that, we need to go ahead and we need to import the change event from React into this component. After that, we need to set up a new function and we're going to call it on note change. We're going to pass in a parameter of event, which is going to be a type of change event. And now use the change event in a HTML text area element like so. In here, we're going to check that there is an event and there's an event.target. Now, assuming both of them are true, what we're going to do is we're going to call our set new note. We're going to set it to event.target.value. What we're going to do is when we update the text box, we have to update the value, the new note. And in order to do that, we're going to have to set the on change event on the text area. I'll show you how to do that. So if we go to the text area down here, we've got this comment here. So this represents is enter your new note here. So what we need to do, as, as I said, we're going to use the on change event and we're going to bind it. We're going to bind an on event, event handler using our on note change. So that is now bound to this function up here. So when the comment is changed, when you, you're, you're using your keyboard to type a new note in, it will go up here and every time it will do it, it will set the new note, which will update the new note variable there. So it will store the value in our text box. What we need to do now is we need to set the value in text area. So what we can do is we'll call our value attribute and we're going to set it to new note. So the whole point of that is that when we reset the new note, it will update the new note value and it will clear down our text box. Now that we've done that, what we need to do is we need to go ahead and create a new function and this function is for when we actually create the note so when we actually submit it when we want it to appear in our notes list so we pass in once again an event parameter and this time it's going to be a type mass event and it's going to be from a button like so 
Once again, we check that event exists. We then need to prevent the default. It's not really going to matter too much, but if you're doing it on a form submit, then it will actually submit the form unless you use the prevent default function in event. Then we're going to go ahead and set notes. So up here, we've got set notes here. So the note listing component, if we go back into our app, got the note listing component here. It's passing in a parameter of notes as an empty array. So if we go back to our interface, our actual props is this note listing components props up here, and it's got our notes array up there. So what we need to do is then what we did here was we set the notes using the prop notes. So we've got two variables here. We've got the notes and the set notes. The notes will store the list of notes and set notes is how we can go about updating it. So what we do is we pass in our notes variable and then we need to add a new note in there. And we're going to use our new notes variable like so. So up here you can see that's the new note. So that's the text that we're typing in into our text box. We're creating it in a new note. Now in our new note class we've got the message and created as properties when we create the constructor we pass in the message and it sets the message and the date created to today's date we're going back into our note listings component what we need to do is we've done that and we just need to set we need to reset the new note so it's an empty string before we do that we're getting an error there because we need to import the mouse event from the React library. Okay, so the final thing we need to do now is we've created our onCreateNote function. We now need to bind it as an event handler in the button on click event when we submit and create a new note. So quite simply, we set the onClick event and we bind it using the onCreateNote. Let's give this a go now and see if it's going to work for us. So let's type in a new note. This is a new note. As you can see, that's now working for us. Now, one thing to say is that we've actually got the application running. So every time we make a change, it will update it for us on the fly. Our next task is calling the button on click event handler in another component. And what we want to do here is we want to go ahead and delete a note that we've already created. Now the problem we've got here is if we go into our note view component, sorry, our note listing component, we've got our notes stored within this component. The thing is, our actual note is in this note view component, and we're going to have to add the delete button within that. So what we're going to have to do here is we're going to have to set up event handler in the note view component, but actually run it in the note listing component. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our note view components prop. This is the props that get passed in into the note view component. We're going to go up here. We're going to import on mouse, mouse event handler from React into the component. Like that. We're now going to set a new property within note view components prop. We're going to call it on delete note. And we're going to give it a type of mouse event handler, which is going to be run from an actual button, a HTML button. Now that we've done that, our next task is we're going to go ahead and create the delete button in our note view component. So we're going to call it as a type of submit. We're going to use the on click event and we're going to bind it to the prop.onDelete note event handler that we just set up. that's props the next thing we want to do is now that we've set that up we need to go ahead into our note view component and actually implement that event handler so what we're going to do in here is we're going to create a new function and we're going to call it on delete note once again we're going to pass in an event of mouse event from a button and also we're going to pass in an additional parameter of index. Now what this index is going to do is it's going to pass in the index number for the note that we wish to delete from the array. 
is then going to go ahead and filter out that note from the array. Now once again we're going to do our check to make sure that event exists and that it's true. We're going to prevent the default and now we're going to call our set notes use state hook and we've got our notes up here so this is the set notes here and we're calling our notes array here which has come from the prop.notes. We're going to filter it out so we're going to pass in the note and the note index and we're going to basically filter out the note of the index that we wish to delete. That means that when this runs we're set updating the notes with the note without the actual note that we wish to delete because the index number has been filtered out. Next thing we need to do is we need to go down here and you can see here we've got an error with this note view component. Now the reason being is if we go back to our note view component we've got our props here and it's now expecting this on delete note event handler but of course we haven't set it here yet so we just need to go ahead and do that. So what we can do is we'll call our on delete note and we're going to pass in our event handler and this is going to because we're passing in an additional parameter, we need to do this slightly differently. We need to get our event parameter by default, and then we're going to call our on delete note. We'll pass in the event, so the mouse event in this index in, in this instance. And because we've got the index number here for when we're listing through the notes, we can go ahead and pass that in as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and run that and see if we can actually delete a note. So as you can see, we're getting an error here and we've just come up with a syntax error. What we need to do is we just need to make sure that we save that. So there we go, we've got it running. So let's go ahead and create some new notes. Create another note. And one thing we forgot to do is if we go back into notes view component, we just need to add some text in there. We just need to add a delete text in there so the button actually appears. So as you can see, that's updated for that for us now. Let's try and delete them. And as you can see, we're able to delete notes from our notes listing. We will now have a look at using on mouse over and on mouse out to change the background color. Now, this is a good opportunity to use some of the other React events that are available. Now, if we go into note view component.css, We've got our highlight class here and what this does is it changes the background color to a sort of gray. This CSS is imported into our note view component file. Now what we're going to do is when the mouse hovers over a particular note it's going to change the background color to gray by setting that class. When we move our mouse away from it it's going to change the background color to white. So what we need to do first is we need to go ahead and once again we need to import our use state hook into this component. Go ahead and do that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to set a new class name and set class name using, well that hasn't worked has it? Class name and set class name and using the use state hook like so. Now that we've done that, what we need to do is we need to create some different functions. The first one is to actually change the background color to set that actual class onto our li tag, which we'll show you in a minute. And the other one will be an on remove background, which will remove the class and set the background color to white. So we're going to set the on change background first. We're going to pass in an event, which is going to be a mouse event which is going to be attached to the HTML LI element. Check that the event is true and if it is we're going to set the class name to highlight. And as I say we need to set up another function and this time we're going to call it on remove background and we're just going to empty the class name. Now that we've gone ahead and done that, we need to set our class name in the li tag. 
So we're going to do that here. We call class name and we pass in the class name variable. The last thing that what we need to do now is we need to go ahead and use the on mouse over event in the li. And this is going to be set to an event handler. And the event handler is, of course, going to be our on change background. Like that. Finally, we need to use the on mouse out event as well. And we're going to set that to our on remove background event handler, like so. We also need to pass in the mouse event type from React to ensure that we're not getting an error there. Right, let's give that a run and let's see if we can get that to work. So we're going to create a couple of notes. And as you can see, when we hover over them, it's changing the background color. And once we hover out from it, it's changing it back to white. Final thing we're going to have a look at is asynchronous event handlers. Now, this is particularly important if you're making API request calls in your React app. You don't know exactly how long it's going to be before the actual response is returned for the API, and that can cause some issues with your React app. So to demonstrate this, what we're going to do is we're going to implement a deliberate two-second delay. So we're going to create a new date variable here, and we're going to set it to two seconds in the future. So we're called coming date dot get seconds and add two to it. We're now going to catch that in a while loop. And whilst the current date is lower than the coming date, which is two seconds in the future, it's just going to loop around the while loop. Give that a run now and see what actually happens. So give that a refresh. We've got our deliberate two second delay there. And then it's gone ahead and created it. So as you can see there, we've got two notes. Let's add a new one. Let's see what happens when we try and hover over it. As you can see, whilst it's implementing that two second delay, we can't hover over the note, which means that it doesn't actually highlight the background color for it. Now, an alternative way of doing that is to make it async. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a copy of the onCreate note. And we're going to call it onCreate note async. I'm going to set the function as async as well. Like that. Now that we've gone ahead and do that, we're going to make some modifications to the code. And we're going to call our await keyword. And we're going to await a new promise. Like that. And we're going to call the set timeout, which will resolve into seconds. Last thing we need to do is we need to make an update to our onClick event handler. Now we're going to make this async as well. So what we need to do is we need to make it async like that. Pass in the event, call our await keyword, and we're going to pass in our onCreate note async, and we'll pass in the event like that. Let's give that a run now and see what happens when we implement that two second delay. Let's go ahead and create a couple of new notes. See, it's got, still got that two second delay there. So let's create another one. So it's creating it at the moment, but we can still hover over the notes and it still changes the background color. So you can see it's created the new note. There's something to bear in mind when you're going ahead and making API calls in a React app. You really want to make it async so it doesn't lock the whole application. So that's how you go about implementing React events and setting up event handlers for them. And the same principles would apply if you're using other React events. So for example, if you're using the onBlur event, you'd adopt a similar approach. Now thanks very much for watching and hit a like on the video.